My name is Norman Briffer. I'm a consultant cardiac surgeon at Sheffield Teaching Hospitals NHS Trust and a reader at the University of Sheffield. This video abstract relates to a review paper entitled Results of Mechanical versus Tissue AVR Caution in Young Patients with Tissue AVR. This paper is to be published in a supplement of the Heart Journal entitled TAVI SAVR How Far Has the Pendulum Swung? The, the articles in this supplement are based on talks given in a meeting with the same name that took place at the Royal College of Physicians in London in February 2018. One of the currently accepted ways of treating a diseased aortic valve is, is surgical aortic valve replacement. Uh, this involves an open heart operation, removal of the diseased aortic valve and its replacement with a prosthesis. And there are two types of prosthesis which are used for this purpose. The first is a tissue prosthesis, as seen on the left here. Their design is based on a native aortic valve and is made of animal tissue. The other type of uh, uh, aortic valve prosthesis is a mechanical one. And these prostheses are made from either metallic alloys or from pyrolytic carbon. The main advantage of a tissue valve is that the recipient does not require anticoagulation, whereas the main disadvantage is its limited durability, especially in younger patients. This may result in degeneration of, of the prosthesis and the need for further intervention. The advantages and disadvantages of a mechanical prosthesis are the converse, namely long, usually, usually lifetime durability as the advantage and the need for anticoagulation to prevent valve thrombosis and thromboembolism as the main disadvantage. The mechanical, mechanical prostheses are therefore used in younger patients and tissue prostheses for older patients, i.e. those with a shorter life expectancy. In this article, I'll, I will review the history of the aortic valve replacement operation from the first that took place in 1962 and the, the surgeon is pictured here, Dr. Dwight Harkin, and he used a mechanical ball and cage prosthesis shown in this illustration. And I also will uh, describe how various different mechanical and tissue prosthetic designs came to be. I will look at the two key randomized control studies which compared outcomes after valve replacement with either a tissue or a mechanical device, and the main outcomes of these trials, which are still applicable today, 20 years after the trials were completed and the findings published. In this paper, I also look at a large number of review articles that were published after completion of the randomized controlled trials. Now, these articles uh, looked at the whole question of the optimal age at which a tissue prosthesis should be implanted in preference to a mechanical one. Uh, and these review articles were either meta-analyses of previous publications or were based on data from large regional and national registries. The findings from the control trials as well as from the review papers inform the guidelines from American and European societies that have been published over the past decade. In the paper, the changes that occur in the different iterations of these guidelines are explained. In the final section of the paper, I will examine how the primacy of shared care decision making, a rapidly aging population, increasing healthcare costs, Increasing need for anticoagulation for purposes other than hard valve replacement. Technological improvements in anticoagulation care. And the emergence of transcatheter non-surgical treatment of tissue valve degeneration. As well as decreasing investment in mechanical valve prosthesis technology will all have an influence on prosthetic choice and prosthetic development in the future.